Hi, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the UV25X4. This is the second gen that they offer. Um, this is a new radio we're going to be offering on our site. And we're going to just go over how to plug it in, how it's going to come, what are you going to see on the screen when you get it, and let's get started. So first things first is powering this radio up. How are we going to do that? You can do it two different ways. You can run it with a power supply and we'll show you how to plug that in right now. We'll have a link to this in the website. We also have a BTEC one that we like too, but this is the Sky Topper STP1330. And you'll see on the radio, we have a connection at the back and this will plug right in. So everything's connected here. I'm just gonna turn this on and you'll see it come up. The radio should turn on, but if it doesn't, you just push the button, you hold to shut it off, and you tap to start it up. There's my name, that's programmed. Yours won't be like that. The second way of powering this unit up is with a DC car outlet. This is my preferred way to do it because it just keeps you from having to buy a power supply. It just adds extra price to the package. Um, Again, on our website and everything, we're going to have links to all the stuff that you need. But let's go ahead and grab this Jackery really quick. We'll just turn the DC power on. We'll plug this in. We will take the connection off the back of the radio, just like we did before. And we're going to plug it in. So this means that you do not need a power supply. And you could also plug this directly into your car's cigarette outlet if you wanted to. So this is a great way to use a good, powerful radio in your car. This is 25 watts of power, and it offers really, really good range. This one is programmed for Phoenix, Arizona. And you'll see everything that is H is ham. And the way that I set mine up is you're going to see the frequency below it. And when you change frequency, it will change with the channel. So I sync the A and B displays together. So when you change this, it'll change that. And same thing on the bottom. So we're actually on quad watch, but we're only watching two channels at a time. This is just to reduce confusion and this has been the way that I found the setup is nice and simple. So you're also going to see when you scroll through all the ham channels that are in here, we'll eventually get to G. So these are the GMRS channels. Anything in the radio marked G with a dash is going to be GMRS. And you should be able to transmit on them and it will be no problem. Now keep in mind, read the FCC rules on all of this everyone always makes a big deal of using a ham on gmrs you can read the rules and decide for yourself i do it all the time and i never had a problem the reason we do not do the gmrs on a gmrs radio is simply because you are fixed on gmrs permanently and a ham radio offers the most flexibility. One thing I wanna show about this radio is it is tri-band. That means it covers the 70 centimeter, the 1.25 meter, and two meter. And I wanna show you something really quick here. Whenever you're either on the two meter or 70 centimeter, it utilizes a single radio in there. And when you switch, you're gonna hear that thing click. You're going to find that you're going to hear it switch between those bands, and that is going to click. It is nothing wrong with the radio. Because we have that third band in there, it just has to activate another system in there. And you'll see it'll do all that. And when we switch back to a 2 meter and a 70 centimeter, that clicking will go away. That is just it switching back and forth. And then we're going to get down here. This is the E. So we have the E services in here. Whenever you order a radio from us, if it is possible and they're not encrypted or on DMR or any other P25 system, uh, that's the mode, we will insert the fire dispatch and if possible police and anything else that we might be able to get in there. Um, and all my radios come with weather in it. 
Uh, it has all 10 weather channels, and you'll be able to access those as well. There's a bunch of different ways to hook antennas up in your car with this radio. This is a mag mount that I use. It's probably not good for 1.25 meter and the other ones. Again, we're going to link a better antenna. I simply just have this just to show you the connector on the back. And you can hook this up to either a home antenna with radials and whatever you wanted. Or it could hook up to a little mag mount. Um, we'll link this one and, and, again, some other ones in there in the description of this. Let's go ahead and cycle through some of this, um, some of the menus on here. Obviously, all my radios are going to come with all the GMRS channels, and they're going to have all the MERS channels uh, in there as well for you to use. And that is the up-down button on that. If you tap the exit AB, it is going to bring you through each channel slot. You'll see that arrow cycle up and down if you tap the hashtag or lock button you will see i am changing the power from high to low high is 25 watts i believe low is about five watts this also does have an fm radio for you to use and you'll see the frequency displayed down there and you could tune to whatever you want. You could type in the station or scroll with one of the knobs once you get it on there. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you ever wanted to go into um, frequency mode, that is that. And you can pretty much tune or type whatever frequency you wanted in there. But you bought a pre-programmed radio. I'm assuming you're probably not going to spend too much time in the frequency mode. So that about covers it for this radio. It's a nice, simple radio with a nice, simple way to plug it in. There is no power station needed, and it offers adequate power for getting much further range than a handheld radio. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.